over the years as a golf coach, I have seen hundreds of golfers and thousands of golf swings. Here are the reoccurring problems which I see. This is first because honestly, it's the most important. Club face is absolutely king. So any changes you're thinking of making to the golf swing have to bear that in mind. The most common occurrence of this is a very weak position at the top of the swing. So the toe of the club pointing down at the ground. A weak position is also an open position. So this will be pointing in relation to the target off to the right hand side. A neutral position would be when the club face is matching the angle of the left wrist and the back of the left arm for a right-handed golfer. If it was in a strong position, that club face will be pointing up at the sky and that would be angled off to the left of the target. It's the weak position which is the most costly to your average golfer. Most golfers have an innate ability to hit the ball somewhere close to the target. And before you jump in the comments like, oh, I'm a terrible golfer, I'll never do it. Everybody has this ability. If you can pick up a stone and throw it towards a general target, you have all the athletic abilities needed to figure out where this club face is pointing. The reason I know this is because so many golfers, when that club face is open at the top, they come over in this direction, swinging to the left in an attempt to neutralize that club face in relation to the target. And this usually causes a big over the top movement and that dreaded slice for a golfer. Now to get a club face in a stronger position, you can do things with the wrist angles, but we also need a really good grip. So start with the grip in the base of the little finger, running through the fingers until it intersects the middle of the index finger on the left hand for a right-handed golfer. That hand then wraps over, and as you look down, you wanna be seeing about three knuckles on that left hand. This is a strong to neutral grip. The right hand goes on, covers up that left thumb, and you are good to go. As well as that grip, we need those good wrist angles at the top of the swing. And you can train yourself using a mirror or using a camera, getting up to the top of the swing and just trying to make sure that that club face, that leading edge, the back of the left wrist and the back of the left arm, they match up. So I have a six iron here, and this is a really good drill to use. Take it halfway back and get the leading edge matching the spine angle. Then if you hinge the wrist up, you want the club face to be matching the back of the left arm and the back of the left wrist again for a right hander. And you can use this in a drill swing. So get yourself set up, turn away, check, and then just try and mimic that position and turn up to the top. Oh, zoom in, Kieran, zoom in, zoom in. It's 215 yards, I didn't, uh... I didn't, I didn't quite check, sorry. The drill still stands, it's still great. Getting the body moving in the right order or the correct sequence, it does take practice, but many golfers really do make it harder on themselves. When Tiger burst onto the scene with his incredibly athletic motion and inspired a whole generation of golfers, many coaches believed that the backswing could only be successful by restricting the amount of hip turn and resisting against the shoulder rotation. In some respects, this could be true. And if I was coaching a talented athletic junior, there may be something for quietening the lower half movement. But most people who play golf are just regular people with jobs who want to use this game as a hobby, but yet are still driven to improving when they go out and play. The chances are you're not going to be able to coil in the backswing like a Rory or a Tiger effectively. But completing a full turn and loading the body is still very important. And so many golfers would benefit more from allowing that right hip to turn more on the backswing. The hips turning on the backswing allow the upper body to also turn more. Lifting that left heel up more will also allow the body to turn. This, by the way, was done by some of the very best golfers in history. Seems to have gone slightly out of fashion, but let's bring it back like shell suits. No, no, not like shell suits. So to see what you free up, here's a super simple drill. Take a club, pop it across your shoulders. And when you take your golf stance and posture, actively move the toes so they're pointing more inwards. Then slowly turn back 
and then turn through. And you should notice the restriction on the joints of the knees and the hips. Then, very simply, move those toes outwards, turn back and turn through. And you will notice again, just how much more freedom you have in the lower half. So let's allow those hips to turn in the backswing, freeing up the upper body and allowing that full turn completion. So this is a little bit more technical, but that doesn't make it any less more important to try and fix. During the downswing, we want to see a little bit of pressure, move on to the left side, as the club has a little bit of a shallow down behind the body, allowing more rotation into impact. However, the positioning at the top of the swing of the right shoulder and the right elbow can make this movement much harder than it needs to be. So often golfers will move to the top of the swing and allow the shoulder to move into what is known as internal rotation. This is a little technical, but in golf terms, think of it like this. If at the top of the golf swing, you shrug the shoulder in towards the ball, that is internal rotation. If you feel that you're shrugging that shoulder outwards, that's external rotation. If the shoulder is internally rotated, the body, just by pure efficiency, will want to move that club a little bit more out and swing it to the left. So a classic over the top movement. Having a shoulder in more of an externally rotated position allows the club to shallow down a little bit easier. A nice way to imagine this is adopting a golf posture and just imagine that you're holding a tray of drinks in your hands. Then what you want to do is turn up to the top of the swing and don't allow that tray of drinks to spill. It's a difficult move to make, but a great way to stretch all the relevant muscles, and this was shown to me by Dan Whitaker, is take the lead arm, put it behind the trail elbow, and as you turn up to the top of the swing, push the elbow inwards and feel that shoulder move into that external rotation. So this first shot, I'm gonna use that right shoulder in internal rotation, and just notice how much more the club moves out to in. So it's still possible to hit a good shot, but I feel everything moving in this direction. On this swing, I'm gonna allow that shoulder to sit in external rotation and just shallow the club coming through impact. A hole in one, first thing in the morning, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Woo! This is something so simple and yet so often overlooked by golfers. How you position the feet at setup can have a massive impact on the swing. During lessons, one of the most common complaints was not being able to turn through the ball. That feeling of being stuck at impact. And there could be many things at play here, but during lessons, setup never seemed to be one of the things considered. And this can be explained by a very simple little exercise. So this is something we've already touched on in this video and again we can do a little drill a very simple explanation at setup so many golfers have their toes pointed straight forwards just toe them in try and turn and then let that left toe flare out and just feel that extra freedom that there is to turn through the ball it is one of those oddities that just seems to strike golfers golf is a very weird game if i was going to throw this ball as I plant my left foot, it would automatically be turned outwards so I could rotate freely. No one ever goes to throw a ball and plants their foot like that. It's just not going to work. When you start with those feet together, popping the left foot away, the right foot away, it just allows the hip that extra freedom to actually turn through impact. And the last thing I see golfers struggle with the most is fairway woods and it's such a shame because these can be a vital weapon in your armory. I've already done a video on this over on the Swing Quest channel. So to continue watching and to continue improving, make sure you check that video out here and be a subscriber to the channel while you're at it.